Hi, today we're going to be learning about interpreting graphs. We're going to start off by talking about what independent and dependent variables are. When you draw a graph, you are making a graphical representation of the relationship between two variables. One of the variables is what we call the independent variable. It is the variable that is going to be on the horizontal axis, okay? And it is not affected by changes in the other variable. Like if you look over here, in this example, the, in, the independent variable is time. Time is going to pass regardless of what the temperature is. The temperature is not going to affect time passing. So time is independent of the temperature. However, the temperature is dependent on the time. As time passes, temperature is going to change accordingly. So for example, it's going to be colder at night than it is during the day, usually. So the temperature is dependent on the time, whereas time is not dependent on the temperature. So the temperature, which is on our vertical axis, is the dependent variable, and the time is the independent variable. So when you are plotting a graph, the independent variable goes on the horizontal axis, and the dependent variable goes on the vertical axis. Now let's have a look at linear and non-linear graphs. A graph can be linear or non-linear. Here's an example of a linear graph. Now, sometimes you'll find a graph where the plots or where the points are just plotted individually like this, and sometimes you'll find that they are joined by a line. If they're not joined by a line, you can check it yourself by joining it to see. But in a linear graph, the points will all be in a straight line. So if you do join it, or if it's already joined, then it will be a straight line like that. However, a non-linear graph is something like this, where you've got the points and they're not they're not following a straight line. Okay, so if I were to join these points like this, it ends up as a curve or it could be a zigzag or something, but it's not a straight line. So a linear graph is a straight line. A non-linear graph is not a straight line. It can be anything else, just not a straight line. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a curve necessarily. It could be other shapes, but it's not a straight line. Okay. So that, that is one feature that we can look at when we are interpreting graphs, is whether or not it is linear. Then we have constant increasing and decreasing graphs. If a graph is constant, then as you move from left to right across the graph, you can see that it doesn't go up or down. It just stays flat, okay? It stays horizontal. That is a constant graph. That means that this value over here is not changing. As the independent variable changes, the dependent variable is remaining constant. It is not changing. The next one we have is increasing graph. If a graph is increasing, that means as we go from left to right, then the graph is going upwards. Okay, so the dependent variable is increasing as the independent variable increases. Whereas if we have an, a decreasing graph, it's the opposite. It is going downwards. As we go from left to right, the graph is going down. Okay, so the independent or the dependent variable is decreasing as the independent as the independent variable increases. Okay, so that's constant. Here we are our constant graph, here we've got our increasing graph, and we've got our decreasing graph. Okay, then we've got maximum and minimum points. Now, that is exactly what it sounds like, okay? If you're looking at a graph, the maximum point is going to be the highest point on the graph. It's the point where the dependent variable has the greatest value. That is our maximum point. And our minimum point is the point where the dependent variable has the, the smallest value, okay? So the minimum point is going to be the lowest point on the graph. The maximum point will be the highest point on the graph. Then you also get two different kinds of data. You get discrete data and continuous data. And when we draw graphs for discrete data and continuous data, they look a little bit different. Here's an example of a discrete graph and a continuous graph. Now you can straight away, when you look at this, you can see a difference. The big difference when you look at it is that in the discrete graph, the points are not joined. Whereas in a continuous graph, the points are joined. They can be joined by straight lines or they can be joined by a curve, but they are joined, okay? Now, in a discrete graph, this is used for data that is counted, okay? And for a continuous graph, it is used for data that is measured. 
So that's the difference between discrete data and continuous data. A discrete graph is drawn from discrete data, which is counted, and a continuous graph is drawn from continuous data, which is measured. In a discrete graph, the points are not going to be joined. You're not going to have a line or a curve joining them up, whereas in a continuous graph, the points will be joined by a line or a curve. In a discrete graph, the, the, you can only take readings at specific points. You can take a reading over here, you can take a reading over there, you can take a reading over there for the independent variable values of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on in this particular example. Whereas in a continuous graph, you can take a reading anywhere on this graph. You can take a reading for any value on this axis over here. I could take a reading at 1 or 2 or 3, just like I can over there, but I can also take a reading at 0 0.5. If I take a reading at 0 0.5, that would be about 17.5, 17 and a half. If I take a reading at 2.5, it would be 25. So you can take readings anywhere on a continuous graph, which you can't do on a, on a discrete graph. I can't take a reading at 0 0.5 because there's nothing there to take a reading from. So that's a big difference between discrete graphs and continuous graphs. Discrete graphs, you can only take readings at specific points, whereas on con continuous graphs, you can take readings anywhere on that graph. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at an example where we're going to actually be interpreting a graph. In this example, we've got a graph that represents the distance traveled by a family as they go on a road trip to a holiday destination. You can see on the horizontal axis over here, we've got the time that's passing as they're doing their road trip, as they're traveling, and that is our independent variable. Then our dependent variable on the vertical axis over here is the distance that they are covering measured in kilometers. Okay, so now you're going to answer some questions based on this graph. I'm going to give you a few seconds for each question, and then I'll go through each one with you. Okay, so the first question you're going to be answering is this one. Is the graph linear or nonlinear? So if you look at the graph over here, you can see that the points are not all in a straight line. That means that this is a non-linear graph. Okay, the next question, is the graph continuous or discrete? Okay, so you can see, if you're looking at the graph, you can see that the points have all been joined. That indicates that this is a continuous graph, and it makes sense if you think about it, because if you look at the time that we're working with over here and what, what is actually being measured, the distance that they're traveling, if you think about how the distance would be changing over time, it's not like they're going to be here at 8 o'clock, and then suddenly, half an hour later, they're going to be 20 kilometers away. They didn't teleport there. They traveled there over the period of half an hour. So because this is something that is measurable, we can say that this is a continuous graph. And you can also see that, like I said, because of the fact that the points are all joined like that. Okay, the next question. At what time did they start driving? Okay, so if you look at the graph at the right at the beginning over here, the very first time that you've got on the graph over here is 8 o'clock. And you can see from that point, their distance is changing already. So they are starting traveling at 8 o'clock. So the answer for that one is 8 o'clock. The next question, at what time did they arrive at their destination? Be careful with this one. Okay, so let's have a look. If you look over here, be careful. They didn't arrive at their destination at 2.30, which is where the graph ends. They arrived at their destination at 2 o'clock, and we know that because from 2 o'clock until half past 2, their distance is remaining constant. That means that they're not moving anymore. 
So when they end, when they stopped moving, that is when they arrived at their destination. So that is at two o'clock over here. So they arrived at the destination at two o'clock. Okay, the next question. How far did they travel all together? Okay, so on the graph you can see over here that their initial distance was zero, they started at zero, and then by the time they reached their destination, the distance that they had traveled was 440 kilometers. So that is how far they traveled altogether. That's 440 kilometers. Okay, question F. How far do they travel between 8.30 and 11 o'clock? Okay, so for this one, we have to look at how far they had already traveled by 8.30. At 8.30, they had already traveled 20 kilometers. So we're not going from zero now, we're going from 20 up to how far they had gone by 11 o'clock, which is 320. So we want to work out the, dis the difference between those two distance values. From, 320, or from 20 to 320, we take the higher value, which is 320, and we subtract the lower value, which is 20, and that'll give us the distance that they traveled in that time frame. So that is 300 kilometers that they traveled from, from 8.30 until 11. Okay, next question. Calculate the speed at which they were traveling between 8 o'clock and 8.30. Now I'm going to just remind you that when you're working out speed, you use the formula, speed is distance over time. Okay, so for this question, we first have to work out what the distance was that they covered from 8 until 8.30. So from 8 o'clock until 8.30, they went a total of 20 kilometers. They went from 0 to 20, so that's 20 kilometers. And then the time, if we're working out the distance or the, the speed in kilometers per hour, we need to know how many hours they were traveling from for from 8 until 8.30. That is half an hour, so I'm going to write that as 0.5. So I don't have a fraction over a fraction. So I've got 20 over 0.5 or 20 divided by 0.5. That gives you 40. And then the, tie, the speed is measured in kilometers per hour because our distance was in kilometers and our time was in hours. Okay, so that's what we should have got for G, 40 kilometers per hour. Right, the next question. Is the graph increasing, decreasing or constant between 11.30 and 12.30. Describe what this interval represents in the context of the, of the road trip and give a possible reason for it. Okay, so there are three parts to this question. The very first thing you have to do is determine, is the graph increasing, decreasing, or constant in this time interval? So from 11.30 to 12.30, let's go and have a look at what's happening. So on the graph, here's 11.30, and here is 12.30. So we're looking at this interval over here. So we have to determine, is that increasing, decreasing, or constant? Now, it's staying flat. It's not going up, and it's not going down as we move from left to right. That means it is constant. So the very first thing we can say is, in that time interval, the graph is constant. Okay, now in terms of the road trip, what does that mean? 
our remember this over here is the distance that they're covering so at 11:30 the distance was 340 kilometers and at 12:30 the distance was still 340 kilometers that means that in this time interval they were not moving they had stopped okay so they're not moving in that time interval so now we have to put that into the context again of the road trip and think about a possible reason for it that's the third part of our question is give a possible reason so now we look and see what is the time over here what is a possible reason why they would not be moving for an hour from 11 30 to 12 30. well the time would indicate that that is around lunch time so there's a good chance that they were stopping at that time to have lunch okay so that is a possible reason for why they stopped from 11.30 until 12.30. Okay, so that's question H. Then question I. Is the graph increasing, decreasing, or constant between one o'clock and two o'clock? Okay, so for this question, it's much simpler. There's really only one thing you have to do here, and look, from one o'clock until two o'clock, what was happening with the graph? You can see that as you go from left to right, it is going upwards. That means that this is an increasing graph over here, or the graph is increasing in that time interval. Okay, then question J. How far had they traveled by 10.30? Okay, so let's have a look. We have to first find 1030 on our graph over here. That is over here, 1030. So now I go up to where the graph is, and let's go and see how what the distance is over there. That is 260. Now, when they say how far had they traveled by 1030, that means the total distance that they had traveled. They're not telling us from another time until 1030. They just say how far had they traveled by 1030. So that means the total distance they had traveled by that Point. So from the beginning of their journey until 10.30. So at 10.30 they had traveled 260 kilometers. So that is what the distance would be by 10.30 that they had traveled. Okay, then question K. Without doing any calculations, determine during which time interval they were traveling the fastest. Referring to the shape of the graph, explain how you know. Okay, so for this one, what we need to do is, in order to know how, which, what part of the graph they were going the fastest, or what part of their journey they were going the fastest, what we're going to be doing is looking at the slope of the graph. Okay, so I want to see when is the slope of the graph the steepest, because if it's steep, it means that they're covering more distance for a certain amount of time. So if you look over here, this section of the graph is not very steep. They only covered 20 kilometers in half an hour. But if it's steeper, it means that they're covering a, a bigger distance for the same amount of time. So the steeper the graph is, the faster they were going. Okay, so I want to find where is the graph the steepest. So let's go and have a look at the slope of the graph over here. So if I take this and I compare it to every other part of the graph. Let's see over here. This part of the graph, that is steeper than this over here. So we know that they were going faster from 8.30 to 11 o'clock, then they were going from 8 to 8.30. Okay, now let's have a look at this part over here. Same thing again. This is steeper than that. They were going faster for this 8.30 to 11 o'clock, then they were going from 11 to 11.30. Now let's go and compare it over here. Again, this is steeper. That's the same this over here is the same, same kind of steepness, so they're going the same speed there and there and there. Those were all the same. Now let's have a look at this one over here. This is the one that looks like it's most likely to be the same or similar or more even than this one over here. So let's compare these. 
So if I look over here, this, which is the, the steepness of this section over here, is still steeper than this section over here. So in this time interval, from 8.30 to 11, they were going faster than they were going from 1 until 2 o'clock. So if I just look at the steepness of the graph, I can see that the fastest or the, the time that they were going the fastest was from 8.30 until 11. That is when the graph is the steepest. Okay, you can use your ruler to compare this. You can take your ruler and move it along and try and see what part of the graph is the steepest like that. So the steepest part of the graph is where they're going to be going the fastest. And that is between 8.30 and 11 o'clock. So that is this over here, 8.30 to 11. That's when they were going the steepest. Or that's when they were going the fastest because the graph is the steepest. So when you're going to explain, referring to the shape of the graph, how you know, it's because the slope in that interval is the, ste the steepest slope. So they covered the most amount of ground per unit time. So if you look at a unit of time being, say, half an hour, then over here they were going a total of from 20 to 60 to 80, that's 60 kilometers in half an hour, whereas here they were only going 20 kilometers in half an hour. Or here also they're only going 20 kilometers in half an hour, and here also they're only going 20 kilometers in half an hour. In this part over here, from there and to up to there, that's half an hour, they were going 40 kilometers. So you can see over here, they only went 40 kilometers in half an hour, where here they were going 60 kilometers in half an hour. So this part of the graph, because it's the steepest, that means that it is when they were going the fastest. Okay. Right, the next question, question L, how long did they take to arrive at their destination? Okay, so now we have to look at when they left and when they arrived. Now, we already said right in the beginning in the first couple of questions that they started their journey at 8 o'clock and they arrived at their destination at 2 o'clock. So we need to work out the time interval from 8 o'clock until 2 o'clock. So we take the 2 o'clock and we subtract the 8 o'clock and that gives us a 6-hour time interval. So that is how long it took them to arrive at their destination. Okay, question M. For how long were they driving before they arrived at the destination? Now, this is different, okay? We know that it took them a total of six hours to arrive at the destination, but that is not how long they were driving for because they weren't driving the whole time. There was a period of time when they had stopped. Now, there are two ways that we can work this out. We can either work out the length of time that they were driving over here and add it to the length of time they were driving over here and see what the total amount of time is that they were driving, or we can take the total amount of time they drove and subtract the amount of time that they were stopped to find out how long they spent driving. Okay, so I'm going to first show you the method where we add. So option one is to add the time that they spent driving, all the driving times. Okay, so first we've got from 8 o'clock until 11.30, because they stopped at 11.30 for an hour for lunch or something. Okay, so that time interval, and also we've got from 12.30, which is when they started driving again, until they arrived at the destination at 2 o'clock. So let's see how long they spent from 8 until 11.30. That is three and a half hours. And from 12.30 till 2 is one and a half hours. So if we take these two lengths of time and we add them, we will end up with a total amount of time of five hours. So that's how long they spent driving. We work that out by taking the different driving times and adding them up. The other option, option two, is to take the total amount of time and subtract the amount of time that they stopped for. Okay, the total time that they took to arrive at the destination and subtract the time that they stopped. Okay, so first of all, let's see how much time they spent driving. We worked this out already in a previous question. 
And the last question is from 8 o'clock until 2 o'clock, they were driving for a total of six, or they, they took a total of six hours to arrive at their destination from when they left until the time that they arrived. The amount of time that they spent not driving was from 11.30 to 12.30 when they stopped for lunch or something, and that's a total of one hour. So we can take the six hours and subtract the one hour that they were stopped, and that'll tell us how much time they spent driving altogether, which is five hours. The same answer that we got when we were doing it the other way around. Okay, so that is an example of taking a graph that you've been given and interpreting it, looking at things like the slope of the graph, looking at whether it is discrete or continuous, looking at seeing if it's constant or increasing or decreasing, and working out different amounts based on the graph. And that is how you interpret graphs. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.